Hello, Cathedral family and friends. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We are so glad that you've joined us this weekend for service. I hope that you'll start your day by counting your blessings. You can count your burdens or you can count your blessings. And when we begin to count all the ways that we've been blessed, all the things we have, to thank God for. There's something in the atmosphere that begins to change. Lauren, what's this Psalm today? Yep, this Psalm for today is Psalm 145 and it says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness, no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another, and they tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I, I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. We serve an amazing God who's worthy of praise and adoration, and that's what we've come to do. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we are so grateful. Thank you for all the many ways that you've blessed us. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Jesus, we are so grateful because we know you. There's always room for joy in our hearts. And so, Lord, we've come today with grateful hearts to sing joyfully to you. In Jesus' name, for Jesus' glory, amen. Well, let's join our worship team and sing joyfully unto our God. God is good. All the time. And all the time. Put your hands together with us. You can even be bold enough to just lift up a shout of praise in this moment. Come on, he's worthy, he's worthy. Let's give thanks to our Lord and Savior today. We can all sing together, you are my rock. So you are my rock and my defense. You are my hope. My confidence, you are my savior and my friend. You are good, you are good. We say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are good, you are good. But in your name, but in your name, these walls fall down, cause you are good, you are good, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, you are good, you are good, yeah, thank you Lord, thank you Lord. 
even if it's just the, simply the words thank you Jesus we thank you we thank you for grace we thank you for goodness we thank you for your presence father and as we continue to worship you I pray that your name would be lifted high I pray that we would be reminded as we sing these prayers we be reminded that we're not alone we're not left to ourselves our Savior has come Lord and it's in the presence of the Lord that we find out who we are we find out who you are we find out of all your promises. So Lord, as we stand against an ever-changing landscape, you are our firm foundation. So God, I pray, Lord, that we would learn as we're learning in this series, Lord, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Lord, we fight our battles in the presence of the Lord. We love you. We place our faith in you. And all of God's people shouted, Amen and amen. We love you, Jesus. We love you, God. There's a table that you prepared for me in the present. Some my enemies It's your body and your blood you shed for me This is how I fight my battles Come on, let's sing it together There's a table that you prepared for me The prayer
word says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And not only that, that if God be for us, that nothing could be against us. So as we declare this one more time, remember who your God is and that you are in the palm of his hands. So let's sing it together. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. All victory is in the air. When we put our faith and trust in Jesus, his victory becomes our victory in the most profound way. I was watching the Oakland A's in their uh, play, playoff this, this week, and I've been a, a lifelong Oakland A's fan. And when they won the series, well, I, I was so excited because they've had a lot of, of failure in the past few years and haven't gotten out of the first round. But this year they did. And when they won, I shouted, we did it, we did it, we did it. Now I wasn't on the field with them. I had nothing to do with that per se. They are the ones that did it, but I identified with them and their victory became my victory. And in the most profound way, when you identify with Jesus, and his victory. Well, his victory becomes your victory and we can live a victorious life. Let victory get in your spirit today. Well, Lauren, here at Cathedral, we've got all kinds of things that are, are still happening. And so tell us about the kids ministry and one of the things that's going on. Yep, so our first announcement has to do with all of our COF kids. So if you are ages up to fifth grade, listen up, because this announcement is for you. We are having our very first pet show and tell. So what we want you to do is we want you to send us a 30 second video of you with your pet. Now you could just be hanging out. Maybe your pet does like a really cool trick. We want you to send it to us. So grab a parent, have them record you just hanging out and having fun with your pet. And we want you to send it to us at cofkids at cathedraloffaith.org. Or if you have any other questions about the show and tell, you can give us a call at the church office. Now, Lauren, I think your kids are going to participate. 
Yeah, we we don't have pets of our own, but thankfully they have grand uh, grandparents that have a massive pet. So we will for sure be submitting a video of uh, my kids with Mr. Arthur. I think, uh, in fact, I think that's the best way to own pets is you don't really own them. You go over and have fun oh, with them. Oh, that's the best way. We don't have just, to clean up. That's right. And uh, uh, mom and no I have to clean hair, up the mess. No dog hair, no mess Amen. in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, we encourage you, you know, to, to, to stay connected with the kids' ministry. Stay connected with all the different ministries here at Cathedral of Faith. As we prepare to give, there's lots of ways you can give here at Cathedral. And... Uh, as we prepare to give, thank you so much for your faithfulness. We are so grateful for your faithfulness during this season. And because of your faithfulness, we've been able to continue to serve our community. Uh, in fact, this year in Gilroy, we're not only distributing food at the San Jose campus, but at our other campuses, at our Gilroy campus already, they have served over a million dollars worth of food this year. Way to go, Gilroy Campus. Way to step up and serve the community, letting people know that they're loved by God. In fact, uh, this week I was out loading boxes into cars at the San Jose campus, and, and it was so wonderful that, that on the second day we had so much food to give away that we were able to give them an extra basket worth of food and to see people's faces when they, they knew that they were not just gonna have enough, but because of God, they were gonna have more than enough. It was a wonderful way to be a, a channel of God's blessing. So thank you again for the way that you give. Uh, continue, to, I encourage you, continue to be faithful. And I, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you and your, your finances that God would continue to bless you in every way. Father, thank you for the families at Cathedral of Faith. Thank you for all of the folks who have been so faithful during this extraordinary season to help us to continue to carry out your mission to the Bay Area and beyond, uh, to see your kingdom continue to advance. And Lord, I, I pray your blessing upon your people. I pray, God, that you would make them a target of your favor in every way. Lord, I pray that you would bless them with creativity and insight and favor in the workplace. God, I pray that you would give them promotion. And I, I pray, Lord, for those who are, have really been hit hard during this economic time, that, God, you would encourage them. And, Lord, you would uh, give them favor that they would be able to go back to work soon and that you would meet them at their point of need today. In Jesus' name I pray this, amen. Well, God bless you as you give. Uh, take a look at what's been happening out of Reaching Out. Jesus said, when you do it to the least of these, you do it unto me. And that's what I feel like I'm doing right now. I'm not just serving God's people, but I'm serving him as well. And this is where Cathedral comes in, the vision of reaching out and being able to supply that little extra that'll make a, a meal complete in a home. I think we're bringing happiness to many hundreds, if not thousands of homes, children who would not have a complete meal otherwise if we would not be able to help them. If you ever, ever, ever felt the need of a call from God to do something for him, and you say, well, I don't have the words, I don't have the skills, look how easy this is. Picking up a loaf of bread, putting it in a basket, setting it in the car, that's how easy it is to be used of God. Come out here, get involved, and I know it'll be a blessing to your life.
winning the battle with the upside down. My brother and I are, are very close. I love my brother. We've been close since we were just little guys. And that's why I harbor no ill will toward him when he refers to me as the Forrest Gump of pastors. Because truth be told, well, he's kind of right. I find myself in the most unusual places, meeting the most unusual people. Uh, For example, I once had the chance to be on a movie set. I believe that if we're going to transform the world, we have to engage it. And so I, I gratefully accepted an invitation to come and be on the set and meet with the producer and the director because they wanted feedback from the faith community. And so after the meeting, I was standing there by the set and coming toward me is none other than the actor, Russell Crowe. Can you believe that? He walks right up to me, sticks out his hand. And at that point, I put my arm across my chest and said, strength and honor. I didn't do that, but I felt like doing it because that was a line from his award-winning film, Gladiator. In that film, he plays the character of Maximus, the commander of the Roman army. And, well, this movie's not for the faint of heart, but if you're interested in seeing how the Roman Empire operated back in the day, then it's worth the three hours. And one of the opening scenes, the, the army fires off these fiery arrows into the air. And when you watch that scene, it may sound strange to you, but this is exactly what we have to face every day. The Bible says there are fiery arrows that come at us through the sky and are trying to hit us right in the heart. We read this in Ephesians chapter 6. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground. Hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Every day, you face fiery arrows that are coming at you, arrows like discouragement, despair, doubt, disappointment, distress, delusion, all these arrows coming at you. But when we take up the shield of faith, this is how we stand our ground and win the battle with the upside down. There are many good reasons for taking up that shield of faith. It's people of faith who go out armed with faith, ready to create a better future for our world. Martin Luther King was once giving a talk and in the talk, he said this, I've seen the promised land and I'm so happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I have a dream that the brotherhood of man will become a reality. And with this faith, I will go out and carve a tunnel of hope from a mountain of despair. It's people armed with faith who take on mountains of despair and create a better future for our world. It's people of faith who have the ability to bounce back from a setback. Jesus is once talking to a disciple by the name of Peter, and he knows that very soon Peter is going to deny him. Peter is going to fail him. And yet look at what he tells Peter. He says, Peter, I have prayed for you. I have prayed that your faith will be strong and that you will not give up. When you return, You must help to make your brothers strong. He prays for Peter that his faith will not fail. Even though he's going to fail, he prays for his faith that he won't give up. 
Because if you hold on to your faith, you're able to bounce back from any setback and from any failure. That is how important faith is. And and the Bible says that when we take up our shield of faith, that's what gives us the winning edge in our battle against the upside down. So let's look at faith for a few moments. First, think with me about what it means to have faith. What is the nature of faith? Romans chapter one, verse 17 reads, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. We live here in the Silicon Valley and we pride ourselves on being people of science, but even the most scientific among us, I would like to suggest, well, that we all live by faith. For example, take all the faith that'll be exercised this weekend here in the Bay Area. If you go to pick up a prescription, well, you don't really know what they put in that bottle. Every time you take one of those pills, that's an act of faith. Or if you go and you dine outside at a local restaurant, you didn't see them prepare your food. So every time you take a bite, that right there is an act of faith. And if you watch a couple walk down and take their vows before a minister, you want to talk about an act of faith? They have no idea what the future holds. Faith is an essential part of the human experience. And that's why all of us must live by faith. What Jesus does is he says, take that faith that you must live by and direct it toward God. Make God the object of your faith. In Mark chapter 11, Jesus says to the disciples, have faith in God. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. In other words, when you take your faith and you direct it toward the God of the universe, well, the impossible in your life, it begins to shift and change. And the impossible becomes, I am possible. Faith is also a choice. It's a choice to believe in what you cannot see. The Bible says, Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. If I was to extend my hand to you and say, I have a quarter inside my hand. Do you believe it? And you said back to me, well, open up your hand. And then I'll tell you whether I believe. I would say to you, well, that's not the way faith works. If I open up my hand, we move out of the realm of faith and into the realm of sight. Faith believes what it does not see. And yet here is the logic of faith. I love what St. Augustine says. He says, faith is to believe what you do not yet see. The reward for this faith is to see what you believe. We find this again and again in the Bible. Abraham believes he's going to have a promised child. First he believes it, and then he sees it. Elijah believes that rain is going to come, and the drought will be over. First he believes it, and then he sees it. David believes that he can take down a giant. But first he believes it, and then he sees it. Some people say, well, when I see it, then I'll believe it. But people of faith say, when I believe it, I'm on my way to seeing it. Let me ask you a question. What are you believing for? If you believe for nothing, you just might get it. There's an old saying that went like this. Faith is acting like it is so, even when it ain't so, so that it might be so, because 
God said so. This is the nature of faith. Faith also has a way of showing itself. In the mid-1800s, there was a tightrope walker by the name of Charles Blondin. He was a great performer. And so he strung a a tightrope all the way across Niagara Falls. That's 1,100 feet across, 160 feet in the air. He was also a great promoter, and so there was a big crowd that showed up to watch him. He grabbed his balancing stick and walked across that tightrope, and the crowd cheered. And then he grabbed a wheelbarrow, and he pushed that wheelbarrow all the way across that tightrope. And again, the crowd cheered. Oh, Charles decided to up the ante. I mean, he was a great entertainer. And so he asked the crowd, do you believe that I can push someone in the wheelbarrow all the way across the tightrope to the other side? And they said, we believe. Yeah, we believe. And then he asked the crowd, are there any volunteers? And it was dead silent. There were crickets. I think eventually it was his mom who got into the wheelbarrow. See, it's one thing to believe that, well, it can happen. It's another thing to believe enough to climb in the wheelbarrow yourself. And biblical faith, it always, it always finds a way to express itself, to show itself. It finds a way to get into the wheelbarrow. That's how you know that your faith is alive. In James chapter two, verse 26, we read, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Are you ready to get into that wheelbarrow with God? Next, think with me about the way that faith grows, the way that it grows. I saw this one picture of a guy who's working out outside, and you can see this right here is what you call old school working out. And now one of the guys who's in my uh, Zoom small group meeting, he owns a gym, and he's had to move his gym outside. And on a side note, let me say, that's why I haven't worked out in seven months, because I just you know, working out, lifting weights and being on the elliptical with people driving by and heckling me, that's just, it breaks my concentration. And, you know, a fine-tuned athlete uh, like myself, it just, it's too much. So I've, at least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. But if you drive by one of these outside gyms and you see a guy that looks like this right up here, you may not know much about him. You may not know his name, You may not know where he lives. You may not know if he goes to church. But if you see a guy with muscles like this, you know he hasn't, well, you know this isn't the first time he's been to the gym. How do you get muscles like that? How do you get faith muscles like that? Well, you got to hit the gym. It seems like for the last seven months, we've been hitting the gym to develop our fear muscles. And between television and social media, it's fed our fears and fostered our fears. So now we can't even fit into our shirts. We're too yoked with fear. And I want to challenge you to develop, instead of your fear muscles, to develop your faith muscles, to feed and foster those faith muscles. You know, I have a mask that that I wear at times. It says, faith over fear. How do you do that? How do you hit the gym of faith? Well, you immerse yourself in the knowledge of God. Immerse yourself in the knowledge of God. The Bible says this about the development of faith. Those who know your name trust in you, O God, For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Those who know your name trust in you. In ancient days, the name of a person 
It would reveal something about their character or their nature. So to immerse yourself in the name of someone is to really immerse yourself in their character and in their nature. And when you begin to dive in to the character and the nature, the name of our God, when you get to know who God really is and what he's like, when you dive into his love or his mercy or his patience or his wisdom, when you dive into his, well, his power or his faithfulness, his providence, his sovereignty, that, that is how you develop your faith. And so here's what I'm going to challenge you to do. I'm going to give you a seven-day challenge for the next week. Join with me. For the next seven days, I want you to spend as much time in Scripture as you spend on social media every day. Because if you'll do that, you know, if you'll invest your mind and your heart in going over Scripture, it's, you're going to see a decline in your fear and a rise in your faith muscles. That's why the enemy, one of the things he wants to do is to keep you away from the book. Because he knows if he can keep you away from this book, see, God's revealed himself through creation around us. We can learn about God. God's revealed himself in our conscious, within us. We can understand something about God. But the clearest revelation of all is right here in the scripture. And so leaning into that scripture, how do you build those faith muscles? Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Immerse yourself in the knowledge of God and then what you'll find, well, you'll find yourself in circumstances where you have the chance to flex those faith muscles. I have a friend who recently, he had a chance to flex his faith muscles. He's one of the most successful realtors in the South Bay area. And he had been with co one company for a very long time, had a lot of success with that company. But a couple of months back, he, he was feeling the nudge. He was feeling directed that he needed to leave that company and join another company. Now, when you think about that, here you are in the middle of a t pandemic. Uh, here you are with the economy still trying to rebound and the job market still trying to rebound to do something like that, to take that kind of step of faith. See, it wasn't just a matter of changing jobs. It was a matter of taking a step of faith, of flexing those faith muscles. And he did it. That's how you develop those muscles. You learn about who God is, and then you flex those muscles by taking a step of faith. Is there a step of faith that God is wanting you to take? A chance for you to flex those faith muscles? First, we've looked at the nature of faith and then we've seen the way faith grows. But the last thing I wanna talk to you about is how faith defends us. How faith defends us. To me, one of the most powerful examples in all of scripture of faith is when Jesus is on the cross. Now, Jesus has been, while well, his enemies have hurled, have mocked him and his friends have deserted him, but Jesus always had the father. Throughout his life, he could always count on the father. He always sensed the father's presence. But here on the cross, something happens. It's hard to know exactly what takes place. There's a, a deep sacred mystery that happens on the cross. 
But for the first time ever in the life of Jesus, he can't see the Father. He can't sense the Father. And so he cries out. It's the cry of dereliction. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But look at these words again. Because... It's the finest example of faith that we find in the entire Bible. That even with the enemy's arrows raining down on him, he still cries out to God, to the God he cannot sense and the God he cannot see. He still cries out to God. And that is when faith shows up best. My dad used to say, faith shows up best when it's dark. When there's fiery arrows coming in from all sides and smoke is filling the sky. And it's dark. Maybe that's where you're at this weekend that where there's so many arrows flying in at you, it just seems dark in your life. It's a dark season of the soul. And your faith feels weak and shaky. And you're losing faith. You're losing faith for your family, faith for your kids, faith for your finances, faith for your health, or faith for the future. Friend, we are together in this moment. You're not here by accident. You're not here by chance. We are together right now in this moment so that together we don't, lose our faith. Instead, we use our faith so that we can be victorious in our fight against the enemy. It's interesting that the Roman shields in that day, in fact, my wife and I were on a a set, another movie set, and there we had these Roman shields that they were using, and, and these are proportional to what they used in that day. They were four feet high, two and a half feet wide. One of the reasons they were made this way was so they could link up together with the other soldiers. You'd have more protection when you were marching together and standing together and moving together. This was the Roman shield. In fact, Russell Crowe, well, He puts it this way. Anyone here been in the army? Yes. I saw we do a bit of honor. You can help me. Whatever comes out of these gates, we've got a better chance of survival if we work together. Do you understand? If we stay together, we survive. If we stay together, We survive. We thrive. Let that get in your spirit. If you're running around on your own, those arrows have a better chance of taking you down and taking you out. There was one national survey that was done once the pandemic hit, and they found that when the pandemic hit, 35% of church attenders immediately and completely dropped out. And the reason that concerns me as a pastor is that if people are running around without being together, there's a greater chance of getting hit by those arrows. And so even though this has been a crazy time for these seven months, We have to still find ways to stay connected. Stay connected to your local church. Stay connected to your Zoom small group meeting. Stay connected to brothers and sisters who are on the same spiritual page. Because when we're together, we can build up each other's faith. We, We stand together. We don't doubt in the dark what God has said to us in the light. 1 John chapter 5 talks about, well, our faith this way. For every child of God defeats this evil world, 
and we achieve this victory through our faith. We hold on to our faith in spite of our feelings. C.S. Lewis once said this about our feelings. He said, faith is the art of holding on to things your reason has once accepted in spite of your changing moods. Feelings make good servants, but they're bad masters. And so instead of letting our moods master us, we hold on to our faith in spite of our feelings. We call out to the God we cannot see or cannot sense because we know he still sees us. Years ago, I read a story about a, an apartment building that had caught on fire. And there was a child trapped in the second floor of the building. The firemen had put out uh, a net down below so that the child could jump to safety. But the child was paralyzed with fear. The dad cried out to the child and said, go ahead and jump. And the child said, dad, the smoke's so thick, I can't see you. And then the dad replied, go ahead and jump. I can see you. I can see you. Even when we cannot see or we cannot sense, we still cry out to God because God still sees us. And faith is what gives us the victory. Let's go to the Lord's table. Jesus, thank you for your body that was broken for us. Because of your victory, we can have victory. We eat in faith. Jesus, thank you for giving your life. Because you gave your life, we can have life. We can have victory. And we drink in faith. And Jesus, I pray for all those who are struggling today. They feel their their faith is fading. Jesus, reveal yourself to them. Build up their faith. Because together, we will be victorious. Now to immerse ourselves in the knowledge of God, here comes the worship team singing, How Great Thou Art.
to take away my sin. Thank you again for joining with us during this service. If you need prayer, pre- please reach out to us, and we'd love to hear from you and stand with you in prayer. And don't forget, right after the service, you'll see the wrap. It's a great way to take the message further and deeper. I, I love you, and I believe in God's best for you. Let me speak God's blessing over you as you go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine brightly upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace. And this week, may you walk in faith and may his victory become your victory. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray, amen. Come on in, it's time for The Wrap. And you know what? We are here, and I can't see you, but I have faith that they're on the other end of it. Come on, man. I can sense you. So we're going to talk about, hey, how about Pastor Ken? Been doing a great job, man, just as this entire Shelter in Place season, but just continually to to preach the word for us and and moving us forward, even in our small group. So if you're watching in, in your small group, we're glad that you're here, and we're just locked in with you in this moment. And Kyle... What stuck out to you today from Pastor Ken's sermon? Uh, what stuck out for me today was the fact, or Pastor Ken's part when he said that you have to have faith in something that you don't see mm. in order to see it. Mm. And I think that's very apparent in my, like, my life as a dancer currently. Uh, for dancers today, it's like auditions are, can be the most like, frightening and daunting things to mm. face. But 
uh, in my recent. I'm saying yeah, like I under understand. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I get nervous it. I, was you? <laughs> I have no idea. Very what you're experienced. Talking about. I think it could be pretty similar. <laughs> but as dancers, uh, in my last audition that I went to, um, it was for a dance team that I looked up to for pretty much my whole dance journey, yeah. and going into it, I was pretty scared. Seeing all the other people, there's like 110 other dancers there, all like around 20 to 30 years old, and being the youngest one there, I was definitely afraid, but yeah. I knew that if I put faith in God and if I had faith in myself to yeah. do what I could do, then it would all be fine. So oh. right before I headed into the studio, I bowed my head down, mm. prayed a little bit, and let him take over. Mm. Right. And that feeling was just so surreal, like not being really in control, but slightly being in control, but mm -hmm. it's just so surreal. and that. That moment was just, I felt as if it was like the changing factor mm. in the outcome of what happened. Right. I ended up making the team, but I felt it was not, it was not just me who made the team. It was mm. a, like a teamwork effort. Right. Mm. And I felt that I have to put that much faith into everything that I do after that to have the same results. Yeah. Team, team God, God, right? Yeah. Like, and, and that's that's exactly what Pastor Ken's talking about in his first point. Uh, this whole, the, what the nature of faith is. He says everything, every day in our lives, there's, there's, it's a move of faith. It's, yeah. it's part of humanity. We, we, we have faith in the fact that, you know, they, they put that prescription right. right. Faith in the fact that that food was cooked right. <laughs> Treat the people right and they will. And, and, and this, this, this experience of faith um, that you just talked about, right? The nature of faith is one where if we take those simple acts of faith and we direct it towards God... We start taking the impossible things in our lives, mm -hmm. and it starts to transform into the I'm possible things yeah. in our lives. So way to go, Kyle. Absolutely. Thank you. Because, you, you know, like with that, you could see it, like, you're not going to make the team if you're not thinking that you can, yeah. right? Because, like, you're not, the, you're, they're going to see it in the body posture. He's going to see it in his effort, like, even in your, in your eyes. Maybe he's like, I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm not, I'm the youngest one here. I can't do it. But yet, you have to act like you can, and you're, to move forward like he, like Pastor Ken, seeing faith is is seeing that which is not already there. That's right. You know, and so way to go, man. Way to live that out. Yeah. You know, you're like Jeremiah, the youngest prophet. <laughs> 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 but you know, uh, like uh, Pastor Ken used the scripture said that we walk by faith and not by sight. So just the soldier when they raise their shield. They, are, they don't see what's coming at them, right? Yeah. I mean, they're covering them. This is a big old shield. But they trust that shield that they will be protected by that shield. Mm. And that is just how our faith works. When we lift up our shield of faith, we're telling Jesus that we believe in you. We yeah. trust in you. You work in our behalf. We are going to come out a victor Amen. by the time we pull that shield you know, down. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, too, just reinforcing the, the last couple weeks with the same concept that we're not on a cruise ship, we're on a warship, right? And we're, we're not in a game, this is a, this is a battle. This is a war for our souls. Yes. And so there are, like Pastor Ken talked about with the, the first image of the arrows from Gladiator, yeah. you know, in the movies, yeah. like th that's what we're in. Yeah. You know, there's a spiritual enemy out there that's it's warring for our peace, it's warring for our soul. So yeah. Kyle, was there anything else that stuck out to you there? I also think that he touched a little bit about quarantine life. And I think that having faith during quarantine life, it could be difficult because you're all at home. You don't get to see other people. You don't get to be in the church. Mm -hmm. But having faith during this time is also the most important with mental health, mm -hmm. yeah. like being at risk here. Mm -hmm. It's very important to have faith that everything will be mm -hmm. back to normal or mm -hmm. back to where it could be again. So good, man. Mm -hmm. That's right. so much I think that also plays into when Pastor Ken said the story about um, the smoke and how he, the child was up there and was like, Daddy, I can't see you. But then those powerful words that God says to each and every one of us, but I can see you. And I just think, oh, my goodness, God, thank you so much on the, on the times where I fail, on the times where I'm lost, when I'm scared or whatever, and we can all fill in the blank, that God is saying to us, yeah. I see you. I mm. got you, which which um, then take which is so comforting. Yeah. Like how Fools great is faith. God? Yeah, That's right. he gives us comfort in our faith. Like yeah. His loving kindness is so great. Uh, and then that takes me to like the part of the wheelbarrow being like, 
f Pastor Ken said, faith finds a way to get in the wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of wheelbarrows that I stay away from because I want to be either in control or have safe or I I'm scared. Yeah. And so my prayer for this message is, God, help me get into those wheelbarrows. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, I don't want to stay who I am. I don't want to be stuck in the same mm -hmm. tightrope. I want to get in the one that you want me to get in yeah. and have no fear. Yeah, mm -hmm. because, because Pastor Ken says in those moments, biblical faith. Mm -hmm. Right, has always will reveal itself. Mm -hmm. Biblical faith will always reveal itself. Yeah. And, and even in those moments, you guys, the way uh, Pastor Ken used the moment in the cross where Jesus says, my God, my God. Mm -hmm. And he frames it um, in this sort of mythical way. He says in that moment, you know, he cannot see or he cannot sense the Father. Mm -hmm. And that's the invitation we led with mm -hmm. today is, you know, we don't we see you, but we sense you. Even though if you don't see it or you don't sense it, and if we have that kind of biblical faith and we use that faith to protect Good. ourselves and we continue to use that faith to move forward and that that god will reveal himself to you it's uh, really good in the mightiest of ways yeah, that's so good hey let's let's pause here i want to give you an invitation those who are watching to put in the chat go ahead and type something in that's that you think will help uh, you or other or us to live out faith in your week this coming week just simple, something very simple. It could be like reading your word, praying, doing something, uh, acts of kindness, something. And then we're going to answer that. We're going to wrestle with that too. But I'm just going to uh, hop on one thing more with the wheelbarrow thing. I think it was so good. That's so profound. Uh, it, when I was listening, and uh, when Pastor Kent said it, he said that his mom ended up getting in the wheelbarrow, right? <laughs> and I was like, what? In the world? <laughs> but, that is, but like it... it um, I don't know, it just, it's just a, what a great illustration of how it's easier to have faith for someone else to walk their faith out right. than it is to get in the barrel, right, and to say, okay, I trust you uh, to get me across. Um, and I, I think that that whole last, that thing of I see you when the Father says that I see you is so comforting and, and empowering to us. And I think also it just it helped me understand too that I really have to own my faith, right? Because, like, I, you know, thinking of the image of the mom, like, I was thinking, like, you know, I can't go, I can't live on my mom's faith, my dad's faith, or even my pastor's faith. It's got to be that's ours, right? right? We have to own this. That's and that's, right. I think that's part of maybe some of that imagery, too, of getting in the barrel. You know, it's like, yeah. we are here. Yeah. I'm in it. I'm in it. So right. let's hit that question. You know, if, does anybody have any, maybe some helpful ideas of how we can live out faith well, this I want weekend. to remind them what Pastor Ken said, that he's challenging us seven days Ooh, to get wow. immersed right. in his word and his knowledge. Ooh. And that's when we need to start. Let's take that seven days challenge to get into commune with God, to get to know who is yep. live in us, this victor. You that's know? a really good yeah, one. So in fact, that might that be all we challenge. need because yep. I don't have time for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. such a good one. Uh, right, yeah, start. so thanks for reminding yeah. me of that, too, because, yeah. That, yeah, that's a great challenge. Mm -hmm. Like, let's let's do that today. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's do it, yeah. you know, and, and hold ourselves accountable. You can set us. There's a setting on your it, Facebook or your Instagrams, like your socials, that, that, that lets you know how much time you spent a day. Right. And then you at the end of the day, let's check that time, and then, hey, look, we got to read the word for that long. That's right. Or more. It starts turning the tide. Yeah. Right? Right it's so Any, funny. It's not just for the youngster that's using that's right. social media. It'll be a challenge for that's us, right. too. Absolutely. <laughs> Young adults. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's end this with the word of God. Yeah, our scripture is Psalms 910. Those who know your name mm. put their trust in you, and you will not wow. forsake those who seek you. Mm. I wow. love that. Know his name, Jesus. Amen. Simple. Yes, Jesus. Well, this was a great conversation. Oh. Thank you guys for, you know, facilitating these conversations with our for our our, our, our church. And Kyle, thank you for sitting in with yeah. us. Thank you for having and, me. And sharing your wisdom, you know, and your faith, man. It's like I feel yeah. challenged to step up my That's game right. and, and join your dance team. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let me know when auditions are, man. I'll send in a video, whatever I got to do. Team but God. no, for real, though. Uh, for you guys that are doing your Bible studies, man, we pray that the Holy Spirit would guide your conversations. And Lord, that uh, the word that Pastor Ken has spoken over us and into yes. us, yes. that would come alive in mm. us, yes. come alive in our families, come alive yes. in our workplaces, yes. come alive in our, our kids and in our parents yes. and our families and the things that we care about yes. and, and we dream for. So Father, we thank you for what we're, we have at Cathedral of Faith. We're so richly blessed and it's all because of you. 
And we give thanks in Jesus' name, all God's people said. Amen. 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 As always, yo, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. So rap. <laughs>